The Body of Anne Boleyn Anne Boleyn is remembered today as the woman who lost her life at the command of her husband, King Henry VIII. She was his second wife, but not the only spouse to meet a gruesome end on Tower Green. After Anne's execution, she was interred in a chest meant for arrows, hidden beneath the floor of St Peter and Vecula, the chapel within the Tower of London's grounds. It wasn't until the chapel underwent renovations during the Victorian era and the graves were unearthed that the grim secrets of the past were revealed. Join us today as we explore the tragic aftermath of Anne Boleyn's life and please support our channel by subscribing. Anne Boleyn's fall from grace came swiftly as she met her end at the edge of a French sword in a carefully orchestrated downfall by the infamous Thomas Cromwell. Anne and Henry had secretly married in January 1533, a move that caused such a commotion that Henry VIII severed ties with the Roman Catholic Church and declared himself the supreme head of the Church of England. England entered a dark and tumultuous period marked by religious turmoil that would last for a generation. Initially, Anne and Henry were happy, engaging in a courtship before their marriage. Anne experienced several pregnancies, but only one resulted in a healthy child. Multiple miscarriage and Henry's desire for a son led him to look elsewhere for love, and Anne was no longer the desired wife. Henry had found affection elsewhere, particularly with Jane Seymour. To marry her, he needed a reason to end his current marriage, and this is where Thomas Cromwell entered the picture. There was no love lost between Anne and Thomas, and he made it his mission to ruin the Queen. Ultimately, Anne was accused of high treason, leading to her imprisonment in the Tower of London on the 2nd of May 1536, where she was then put on trial. Anne was convicted of incest, treason and adultery, and on the 19th of May 1536, she met her tragic end. Before her execution, Anne was confined within the tower, the same place where she had been just three years earlier for her own coronation. On the day of her execution, Anne was brought to Tower Green, where the scaffold had been erected, ready and awaiting her and the executioner. While on the scaffold, she gracefully addressed the people, her voice somewhat weakened by her ordeal, but gaining strength as she spoke. She pleaded with them to pray for the king, whom she had always found kind, and the spectators couldn't hold back their tears. After bidding farewell to her ladies and attendants, there was not a dry eye in the large crowd. It was at this moment that Anne confronted her executioner. The skilled swordsman from France then carried out his duty, swiftly severing Anne's head with a single stroke to the back of the neck, shocking the witnesses. Many across England believed Anne would find her place as a queen in heaven, including Thomas Cranmer, a staunch supporter of Anne. Normally, the remains of those executed within the tower and on Tower Hill were placed in an arrow chest and buried inside the chapel of St Peter and Vecula. The church itself is a Tudor chapel and serves as a final resting place for many of the Tower of London's most famous prisoners. Anne, Catherine Howard, Lady Jane Grey, her husband Lord Guilford Dudley, George Boleyn and many others found their rest here. Anne was the second person to be interred in front of the high altar of the chapel during the Tudor period and the reign of Henry VIII. Thirteen notable men and women would follow her and her brother to their graves inside this chapel of the building. In the Tudor era, individuals executed for treason were typically not commemorated with headstones or celebrations of their lives. Their resting places remained unmarked. However, there was a record kept of Anne Boleyn's burial place. A Tudor chronicler wrote at the time of another Tudor execution that the corpses, along with their heads, were buried in the chapel in the tower at the high altar. A floor plan of the chancel's interments shows Anne lying to the left of the altar. Then, during the era of Queen Victoria, the chapel where Anne is buried became the focus of renovations. It was during her reign that extensive restoration work was carried out, not only on the decor, but also on the heating systems. 
Plans were set in motion to refurbish the chapel, but the restoration efforts inadvertently led to the desecration of some of the most prominent graves. Queen Victoria was deeply troubled to discover that the chapel had been repurposed as a meeting room, a practice that she strongly disapproved of. Consequently, she ordered the comprehensive restoration of the building. A multitude of enhancements were made to the modest church, as Queen Victoria believed that the place was neither suitable nor appropriate for the burial of royalty and other high-ranking individuals. It was during these renovations that the chapel's floor needed to be lifted, and the builders realised that they had to exhume the bodies of those who rested near the altar in the high chancel. The church's pavement had sunk and become uneven, and upon lifting the flagstones, it was apparent that the bodies buried within the chapel walls during the Tudor and Stuart periods had suffered repeated desecration. The floor was subsequently relayed, but the area in front of the altar, where Anne Boleyn lay, remained untouched initially. The plan was to leave the chancel undisturbed, but significant alterations were deemed necessary, leading to the exclamation of Anne Boleyn. On the 9th of November 1876, while the world outside went about its business oblivious to the events within, the body of the Queen was exhumed. Anne had been interred for 300 years at this point, as careful excavation work commenced at a depth of about two feet. Anne's remains were discovered. The bones had all accumulated together in one location. Disturbingly, the grave had previously been tampered with. Anne Boleyn's burial spot had been disrupted due to the collapse and decay of the coffin of a 54-year-old woman named Hannah Beresford who had been buried in a similar location back in 1750. It was determined that the cause of the payment's collapse was this earlier burial, which had also disturbed Anne's final resting place. A surgeon named Dr Frederick J Moat, along with his team, meticulously and forensically documented Anne's remains. He described her as a female aged between 25 and 30, with a delicate frame and slender, perfectly proportioned body. Her forehead and lower jaw were small and well formed, with particularly small vertebrae, including one joint called the atlas, which was adjacent to the skull, bearing witness to the Queen's slender neck. Further examination revealed that the bones of her head indicated a well-formed rounded skull with an intellectual forehead, a straight habitual ridge, large oval eyes, a square face and a rather square full chin. The remains of her vertebrae and the bones of the lower limbs indicated a well-formed woman of average height with a short slender neck. The ribs displayed depth and a roundness indicative of a well-shaped chest. The bones of the hands and feet suggested delicate and well-shaped extremities with slender fingers and narrow feet. All the individuals involved in Anne's exhumation were certain that it was the remains of a female. After the remains were carefully unearthed, they were entrusted to the tower's governor, who stored them inside the Queen's house, his residence. Two days later, additional bodies were discovered, including those of Jane Rushford and Margaret Pole. Anne's bones indicated that she stood around 5 feet or 5 feet 3 inches tall and confirmed her cause of death as beheading. Anne's body would remain in the Queen's house for another five months before being reinterred. On Friday the 13th of April 1877, seven men, including the resident chaplain of the chapel, gathered inside the chancel at midday. This time, their purpose was to lay the bodies to rest in specially crafted lead caskets. Each of these caskets was constructed with thick lead and held together with copper screws within oak plank boxes, approximately one inch thick. An etching on the coffins displayed their names and the year of their death, along with the date of their reinterment. Records of their burials were also noted, and a decorative floor now marks the location of these graves. The identity of the remains discovered has been a subject of long-standing debate. Regardless of the truth, Anne has become a pilgrimage destination for many individuals around the world. Visiting her and the other individuals buried within the chapel evokes a profound sense of reverence and reflection. 
a moment of contemplation fosters great respect for the bravery and courage of those within the chapel's walls during their final moments and instills hope that the events of the past are never repeated. Today, Anne Boleyn is viewed by many as a martyr, a woman whose life was unjustly taken from her by the ruthless men who ruled the country at the time. She faced an unjust death sentence, but her legacy endures. Unable to provide Henry VIII with a male heir, Anne's daughter, Elizabeth, went on to become one of the greatest queens in history, a remarkable defiance against the man who ordered her mother's execution.